G'day. This is a combination of two videos where we look at different ways of boring a recess in the end of the part. All right, let's get started. Right, here's the part. You can see there's a recess in the end, but the hole in the middle is only six diameter, so that doesn't lend itself to using a very big boring bar. So, I've tried using a subroutine to actually move a bigger boring bar in the X direction rather than the Z. Now we've already drilled the hole. I'm trying to trying to hurry this up so we're not too bored. So we've already drilled the hole. This is a five millimeter boring bar. Boring this recess this way takes 45 seconds. I think the boring bar is removing a reasonable amount of material for its size. Don't know that I could have asked it to do much more. But with a six mil hole to uh, start your boring bar off, you can't do much else if you're doing it this way around. This is the simulation that I get using the DOS software that comes with the Hercus. That's just the turning. And we drill a hole. Now I've always admired guys who can mess with their CNC's and make, some, make them do all sorts of things running subroutines. Uh, so after a lot of groundwork and trying to work out how to do it, I came up with this. And this is just a little subroutine that sends the tool forward, then it retracts, and then it goes forward again. I think it retracts about one mil and goes forward 1.3 mil. This is using the relative dimension um, coordinates instead of absolute. And that's it done. And that's using a 12 mil boring bar. So, um, I was quite pleased that I was able to do that and the time came down quite considerably. That's just the part being parted off. And it has to be parted off because there's it's you can't do it can't hold it to turn the other end. So here's the actual tool at work. Now this takes 30 seconds compared with 45 using a 5mm boring bar. So using the G91 command which changes from absolute to relative movement, this subroutine runs 9 times and just keeps moving forward and then when that's finished you just take a finish cut to finish the thing off. Now this, the turning of these parts in the, in the two different videos is quite different. This one is being done where I was using a KBIC driver on the spindle. Now I didn't spend a lot of time trying to get the KBIC to run right because I knew I had a Minerik driver coming that had regenerative braking and uh, reverse, whereas the KBIC didn't. So there's more cuts in this than I take on the next part with using the Minerik driver. Still removing material fairly well I think for a half horsepower motor. Now this is using the Minerik driver. You can see that's a fairly serious looking cut. Only takes a few of the cuts before it's um, done. Uh, this is another shot of the same thing. You can see the ammeters going over to 5 amps which is all the motor is rated at continuously. So, when I, once I had the ammeter fitted, I was able to, to judge much better just how hard I could push this thing. And when it's a small lathe, you really do have to push it to make it make any sense at all. These parts were far too big to go through the bore of my lathe, so they had to be made and parted off and a piece of scrap left in the chuck basically. 
you see this part there's no virtually no way that you can hold it to clean that edge up so when you part it that parting face has to be a good face so that you can actually sell it to the customer that way that chamfer that I put on there that that I'm able to do that with these tools because they actually are well supported they're not just a blade tool that's the finish that I get from the parting as there was no pecking just went straight from the outside to the inside and that's the finished part hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching